So now in this video, we come back to this circuit, the 555 timer, wired in a stable mode, and there is the circuit that we have there. I have the one kilo ohm resistor here. Last video we saw, since the LED is not very bright, that we could substitute it with a 220 ohm resistor. But in this video, we're going to increase the voltage from 5 volts to 12 volts. That's one of the things we are going to do. So we're going to grab the meter here and zoom in a tiny bit. But in any case, this jumper is not connected to anything right now, just the positive rail. We will get a voltage. So I have my bench power supply right now. And so we have 5 volts right there. And uh, looks like it's kind of drifting a little bit. But in any case, I'm going to increase the voltage of the power supply so you can see here that I have these jumpers bringing the power to the uh, board and then if I plug it into one side it goes across to the other side via these jumpers so I got positive there and then a red jumper that goes to the other positive same thing with the uh, negative over there so watch the uh, voltage I'm gonna go up to 12 the LED is getting brighter and it's not flashing any faster and so that uh, voltage is making a big difference right there so let's go a little bit above 12 right there so you can see the LED is brighter now you notice a problem the LED kinda starts lighting up and another thing we can do we just went to 15 volts let's get this out of the way let's look at the rail there and uh, yeah, that meter is not going to uh, cut it. We'll have to look later with the uh, oscilloscope. But first, let's address another thing. That's right, we got that flicker too. That's not helping. So, you can see that it starts lighting a little bit before it fully lights up. And that happens with my bench power supply here, at least with the setup I have. So actually, usually in uh, schematic diagrams, you see pin number 5 which is this bottom pin down there with probably a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor or a 10 nanofarad capacitor as it says there 10 nanofarad I have this uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor which would work too but a lot of times you'll see 0 0.01 microfarad which is the same value as a uh, 10 nanofarad and so we're going to just pluck the capacitor and generally you don't want to you want to turn the power supply off before you modify a circuit but as I said before sometimes you notice interesting things when you are modifying it with the power applied and uh, so what we're going to do we're going to take the 10 nanofarad 0.1 microfarad and go to pin number five right there so a lot of times you'll see that on the data sheet. Now let's replace the 1000 microfarad capacitor, trying not to connect to any of the wires there. And uh, I'm going to push this one down that way, that little capacitor. Try to loop behind it, right there. So now we have the uh, circuit working again once I get uh, the connection. And now you can see it looks like the LED is just turning on right away on and off right away so another thing I noticed so I'll pluck that so with the breadboard power supply I don't seem to have to worry about that I think that is because the breadboard power supply has a capacitor right uh, right by the board you can see it and uh, we're gonna take the same 10 nanofarad capacitor and go to the rail and you can see right there it uh, looks like it took care of the problem there as well now we can uh, get the oscilloscope it's going to uh, look at this and also it's going to uh, look at another problem we have so now I have one of my pocket oscilloscopes here and we have alligator clips that come out of that plug there I just clip them to uh, jumpers there and then you can stab them into the board out of the way and it 
holds them uh, pretty nicely right there. So there's the red one and uh, there's the black one and there is the red jumper. So first, let's look at one problem. So there's the waveform. It's uh, I do have the uh, capacitor here. We uh, will remove that after we look at uh, this. But uh, you can see the uh, pretty much square wave there. Hopefully it's about even. I'm going to yank that out, put it to the positive rail, and now you can see that uh, we have, let's try to stop it there, and that went a little longer than I would like, but you can see the uh, waveform there, it's kind of like wavering a little bit at the top, but you can see it's holding the voltage pretty steady. So each, there's our zero volt point, I can move this to move the zero volt point, but there's zero volts, you can see we got one, two, three, a little less than four volts because it's one volt per division going up and each square across is one second and it looks like about it looks like it's high about one second and then it's low for a little less than one second and we could remove the diode and see how much that changes but uh, ideally we would like to get 50 50 sometimes but this still okay so in any case I removed the jumper you see we had nothing for a little while other than a little noise I plugged the uh, jumper back in took a little more than a second I plugged it to the positive rail you can see we have the 5 volts slightly above 5 volt it, it looks like and so that's uh, one problem we have is the uh, output is not sticking to 5 volts so we have a 1 kilo ohm resistor there and an LED and we saw that uh, the voltage is not making it to 5 volts. That's one reason why the red LED is not terribly bright in this circuit. So there you can see we're back there. It's not the 5 volts. One thing I noticed though, if I yank the LED, now we get a higher output voltage. So it's not powering anything now. The LED is gone. And another thing we can do is uh, plug it, the red LED, to this jumper where the LED is now going to light when the output is low and you can see the voltage is holding the same because it does go all the way to zero volts when it goes low so we got positive to the long lead of the LED short lead comes to this resistor it goes there it lights up when the output goes low so that's one reason why with 5 volts the LED is not getting terribly bright now let's change it to, to 5 volts per division and uh, there you can see it's the same square wave, but now it's about as thir a third the height. And that's because uh, each uh, square, or uh, it's about a fifth of the height, I should say. Because instead of uh, one square being one volt, now it is five volts. Let's quickly put this up to 12 volts. You're going to see that go up. Right there. And it's going up. So we got 5, 10, uh, probably about 11 volts or something. I bet we're still losing about one volt might be easier to tell oops if we go to uh, 2 volts so there you can see 2 4 6 8 10 and about a half so about 11 volts out of 12 we'll plug this into uh, the positive rail and there you can see slightly above uh, 12 it looks like so now let's uh, put that back to the output let's yank that uh, resistor out of the way and there you can see at the bottom that where it was struggling. So we, we removed that capacitor that smoothed it out. So it looks like it smoothed it out if we put it from uh, the negative rail to pin 5. And also if we just put it to the rail there. And there you can see that it should be turning on right away. But it doesn't. It kind of sputters a little bit. And let's verify that. So I think it's because there's resistance coming from the uh, bench power supply. Now you can see uh, it's up there and it's making a little noise. It's not terribly happy being up there. So we want to put this to pin 5 right there and then put the timing capacitor back in. It's polarized. The little ones are not polarized. Don't assume they're never polarized. Try to look for a plus or something. But uh, there we go. And uh, I'm making sure I don't short circuit any wires there. It's just pushing on the plastic. But there you can see at pin 5, 
again, we have a smooth transition right there. I don't think there's a, there's kind of like some sputtering, but I think that's just sputtering while it is low. I think it's jumping right to high as it should. And that is with uh, 12 volts on there. So, a lot of capacitors that you see, they, they're not quite doing anything circuit wise. They, that is obviously doing something important right now, studying the uh, voltage. But otherwise, it's not really doing anything. It's keeping uh, unwanted uh, voltage changes from happening and uh, stabilizing things. So sometimes you'll see a capacitor and you don't know what it's doing. That's what it's doing. It's just taking uh, just slight current changes and holding a voltage. It's absorbing some voltage changes and that's what we see there. So in any case, uh, I think that is about it in this video. Let's go back to the uh, blue LED. It is naturally a lot brighter. So as we saw before, if uh, I take a one kilo ohm resistor and go one spot away from this red jumper. In fact, I gotta go there to leave room for the uh, resistor. So that's going to the from the output, pin number three, to one spot away from the red jumper. Now we're gonna take the blue LED, and again, this is more positive. We gotta put the long lead there, short lead. We put to the resistor. LEDs are a type of diode. They only conduct in one direction. And uh, there we go. You can see the blue LED is a lot brighter. Let's go back to the five volts. And as we saw, we lose about a volt, whether it is five volts or uh, 12 volts. And so losing a volt from five volts is a lot more impactful than losing a volt from uh, 12 volts. And because then you're dealing with four instead of 11. And 11 is closer to 12 uh, than uh, 4 is to 5 in the grand scheme of things. Plus these have a, a voltage drop that remains steady. So they're also dropping a certain amount of voltage. And uh, so you get closer to 0 volts when you're only dealing with 4 volts to begin with than uh, when you're dealing with 12. So in any case, you can see the blue LED, it's uh, quite a bit brighter. And it doesn't look too horrible here. But let's do something. Let's uh, yank the uh, red LED and blue LED. Got to turn the red LED around because it's a uh, positive down lower now. And uh, there we have it. And the uh, blue LED long lead the anode goes to the resistor. Short lead the cathode goes down. And this should help make it a little more uh, normal too because the voltage does go to zero volts no matter what. So when the red LED is lit up, it's going to the positive rail of five volts and then to a zero volts. Whereas the blue LED, we have about four volts coming out and uh, heading uh, through the one kilo ohm resistor down there. So that helps even out a little bit more too. So there's a number of tricks to, to uh, make different changes to this to balance things out and whatnot. So in any case, Hopefully that all made sense and you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.